Hello, Mr. Montalvo here, U.S. History. Um, today is, uh, we're taking a look at Unit 3, Lesson 3, Day 5, um, taking a look at the Era of Good Feelings, as it would become known as. Um, today we're going to take a look and examine the Monroe Doctrine and its effects on foreign policy, or how the United States interacts with other nations. Um, some important terms to understand for today's conversation are embargo and sectionalism. Now, an embargo is a ban on trade from another country, so imports coming in from another country. Uh, and sectionalism is loyalty um, to the interests of one's own region or section of a country rather than to the country as a whole, which is known as nationalism. 1816, James Monroe became the new president of the United States. He was the fifth president of the U.S. The Monroe presidency would become known as the Era of Good Feelings. Now, the Era of Good Feelings was significant or important because there, were no, there was only one major political party in existence, so that meant that there were very few fractional disputes. In 1817, James Monroe made a goodwill tour of the nation and everyone welcomed President Monroe. And soon afterwards, uh, three political giants emerged. Uh, Daniel Webster, who spoke for the people living in the North, John C. Calhoun, uh, for the people living in the South, and Henry Clay, who was a young lawyer um, and a man of action. As a result of the Embargo Act and the War of 1812, British goods were no longer allowed in the United States, allowing for United States businesses to really grow and prosper. Uh, the British had a head start on industrialization, so they could sell their goods for cheaper than American companies could. As a result, the Protective Tariff of 1816 was placed on British goods in order to make costs higher for those British goods and allow for American uh, companies to be more competitive. As a result of the tariff, industry developed primarily in the North and not so much in the South due to the lack of factories, the lack of infrastructure. Uh, in, the section, in time, sectionalism would develop. Now, Henry Clay called for an American system in which the North and the South would have equal opportunity to industrialize. However, this was very unsuccessful. The hope was also that if the United States industrialized, or rather the Southern United States industrialized, the need, quote unquote, for the slave trade or slave or forced labor would be lessened and eventually the practice would come to an end, but this was not the case. In 1823, President Monroe made a statement on foreign policy or how the United States, uh, rather how countries interact with other nations, in this case, the United States. This would become known as the Monroe Doctrine. Now, Monroe said that the United States would not interfere in the affairs of European nations or European colonies in the Americas. At the same time, however, he warned European nations not to interfere with the newly independent nations that had formed in Latin America. Now, as um, you probably have a better understanding now, taking a look at the excerpts of the Monroe Doctrine that were provided in the previous day's lesson, um, that this was kind of selfish in a way. Uh, the United States was in essence declaring themselves the protectors of the western hemisphere of north and south america they wanted to be the dominant force in the hemisphere and as a result they wanted to make a very firm stance and restrain latin america
and restrain European nations from trying to reconquer newly freed territories or expand their empires in the Western Hemisphere. Now, uh, connected to this lesson is a constructive response set, taking a look at various documents that cover the topics that we've discussed within this lesson. Um, and to uh, just to sum up our conversation for today, try to explain the Monroe Doctrine and its effects on foreign policy. What does it do to the United States? What does it say about the United States and their belief of themselves? Um, that's all for today. Thank you.